it's a good idea to reach out to the realtor community. Realtors, the reason why it's so important is multiple, multiple issues. Realtors touch appraisers in their daily lives, right? Realtors and appraisers are side by side. Appraisers, as you saw in the video with Jeremy Bago, are being instructed, commanded to commit fraud or they will lose the assignment or they will be fired. Well, that backs up on the realtors. The realtors can't say, well, we want to turn a blind eye. On a personal level, they can't say it because they are mom and pop. They're in the exact same boat as a person who owns a $200,000 home or as a person that owns a $2 million home. The taxes that are being levied on overvaluation, thus causing overtaxation, are a straight up fraud, period and a paragraph. So if a realtor says, my client wants to enter into a bidding war, let's take this up a notch. The realtor A is getting paid a commission to do so. He thinks he's helping that person, but the reality is, can you imagine what will happen in six months or a year from now when that person can't make the payments on the million one? What did the realtor really do? Well, the realtor participated in a problem. Now, is the realtor guilty? Well, if the realtor was smart, they'd have that buyer sign off and say, yes, I want to overpay for this house. If the realtor is not smart, then the realtor could be sued and could potentially lose because that home buyer would say, I was induced. Okay? And that's why it's so important. People have got to be aware of what's going on. When those realtors go to a CAD, and the realtor doesn't understand that the CAD has committed fraud in terms of the numbers, that realtor unintentionally was induced to participate in a system that is a fraud. This backs up on everybody. Nobody is, is not responsible here. So these laws being broken literally add up to a system that is designed to defraud. So the people are participating in a system as unwilling and people that don't even know what the values are. But when you go to a CAD and you understand that everything you see coming out of a CAD is a fraud, you have the right to say, wait a minute, what is the real value of this to my client? Now, if your client says, I don't give a damn what you say, Mr. Realtor, I want to buy this house, my wife wants me to buy this house, I'm buying it and that person has the money, Godspeed, amen. The problem is it's what you don't know that's gonna come back to bite. So not only are the realtors mom and pop, they're gonna get screwed on their own property taxes, they know their friends and family are getting screwed. Now with regard to the clients, how do you protect the client from getting into a bidding war? How do you protect the client from what is the real value? Well, we're right back to the issue. You have to actually look at the income of that client and say, can you afford this? And what the fellow was saying before about the, uh, the servicing agents, requiring taxes being paid. I mean, this is so sick and twisted and so deep. Think of those people that have to pay those taxes in advance. The servicing company comes in and says, by the way, you, you owe us based on what this CAD said or your taxes on a fraudulent number, give us that money in advance. They don't have the money. That literally puts them in default on, right on the spot. Who did it? The servicing agent. People are completely blindsided because they don't understand the most simple basic element of all of this, where it really comes from. There is no CAD that is producing a legitimate value under any definition in law. Everything we spoke about here today stems from that one simple fact. There is no CAD that is producing a value, a legitimate value under any definition in law. They can't give you the math to back up their comps because their comps aren't even comps. And it all falls down from there. This will eclipse it because in reality you're talking trillions, trillions of damage. If, if the taxpayer doesn't get involved or fight, now you get hammered for the, the year coming. Is that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that, that's why this thing gets that's so deep and so hard. twisted. Yeah, if you don't go in and protest, those CADs will literally double your value or, or triple your value the following year. Two years down the road, you're right back fighting. You must fight every single year. You must use legit, your legitimate comparisons in your area to stand up in front of them and say, no, 
there's a lot of realtors that are getting on these CAD boards. And I would suggest to you that those realtors are bad realtors. Those are the people that believe that their commission comes first. So when they get on a CAD board, think it through. When they get on a CAD board, well, the values have to be these, these values. Those realtors don't know the first thing about USPAP. They're doing the same thing. So you see the problem? Mm -hmm. Their ignorance and their greed is what's causing those people that are on the boards. And that's been a recent thing. I mean, over the last five years, a lot of these boards are being stuffed with realtors. Who put them there? Ah, the county judges. Who are the county judges? They make their money by getting their money from the taxpayer. So the, the, the system is so badly corrupted, the only solution is to eliminate the property taxes. There's no other way to do this because you have to eliminate the subjectivity. That is the only way to do this. So when you look at your own CAD board, be it in, in Plano, go and look. Figure out how many realtors are on those boards. The odds are that those aren't the people that you want in your company. You want people to actually give a damn. See, when you sell a house, remember I was a broker, so I, yeah. I have sympathies, right? So when you sell a house, you have to have a seller and a buyer, willing seller, willing buyer, who both win. When you sell a commercial property or an industrial property, both sides have to win. Well, if you as the realtor didn't do the research to figure out how bad the tax situation was and the person buying can't afford it, well, that's not a win-win. You, the realtor, got paid. The seller got his money. The buyer has a higher probability of going bankrupt. Less than three years. So in 2008, in a subdivision that I built, there was about 38% turnover because they couldn't afford the homes. That's happening right now today. So the idea that this is not affecting $200,000 people, see the point being that if you're in a $200,000, $300,000 home, that exact same situation translates into somebody that thinks of themselves as a multimillionaire. The reason why they're having problems is in, in, in this particular case, in two of the houses, the wife lost a job. In another house, they should never have bought it in the first place because they couldn't afford it. And big houses take big money to maintain. So you end up in a circular argument. Well, right now today, we're back to about 30%. Not 38, we're at 30% in that particular subdivision. When things go off the rails, which they will shortly just due to the debt load, um, I expect that to come pretty close to 50%. This is going to be bad. And that's what you're seeing. When you're starting to see houses back up in inventory and you're starting to see CADs making assessments that are criminal assessments in violation of the Texas law, this has no choice but to implode. This will implode on its own, never mind the fact that we're doing this. The goal here is to stop it from imploding on its own and saying, okay, let's get involved, let's fix it fast, give the people back the power so that they have a balance sheet of their own in the next 10 or 15 or 20 years when they go to retire. Because by the way, Social Security won't be there either. So you, if you don't do this, you are gonna turn this country into Venezuela. It's real simple. And Canada has gone totally socialist. Britain has gone totally socialist. They've got riots in the streets. When people run out of money, people become desperate. When people become desperate, they do desperate things. This cannot be shoved under the carpet. This is real, it's here now, as you've seen when you did the analysis. These houses are backing up. Now, what are you gonna do when, that's just for sake of conversation, that's 5,000. What are you gonna do when another 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 hit the market and the exact same thing happens? Wow. This touches everybody. You could be a billionaire because why? Your staff, they all have houses. What are you gonna do when they can't afford it? They come knocking on your door saying, I'm, I'm going broke. I don't have the money to pay. Mr. Billionaire with 500 employees, what are you gonna do?